you know, we see, still see very strong demand for, for our trucks. And so I'm excited about the demand. The customers are really responding. These days, consumers are beginning to lose interest in cars and SUVs and are beginning to have an affinity for pickup trucks. So one would think that every manufacturer would try to take advantage of this and start producing more pickup trucks. But not General Motors. Instead, GM has announced that it is closing its entire plant and stopping the production of pickup trucks. So what led to this? Join us as we explore the real reason why GM shut down the production of its pickup trucks. Before we go into details, it is essential to know that GM has taken this same step before, albeit for a different reason. Last year, GM halted pickup truck production at a factory in Indiana due to the shortage of semiconductor chips that wreaked havoc on the global automotive industry for more than a year. The supply of chips, which are critical parts for new vehicles, was expected to gradually improve for automakers throughout the year. But other problems in the supply chain, including Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine, hampered this supply. In 2021, the company also halted most U.S. and Mexican production of its profitable full-size pickup trucks because of the same global shortage of semiconductor chips. Today, the supply of semiconductor chips is much easier, so this can't be why GM is halting production again. So what exactly is the reason this time? Well, simply put, GM now has too many trucks. Their inventory now outweighs the demand for its vehicles with the easing of supply chain snags. GM declared a two-week shutdown of the pickup truck plant in Fort Wayne, Indiana, beginning on March 27. According to an internal memo that the Detroit News was able to get, the internal move was brought about by increased production at a time when demand was steady. The Fort Wayne plant builds half-ton versions of the Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra, two of the most popular vehicles sold in North America. According to GM spokesperson Dan Flores, GM's full-size truck plants in Michigan, Canada, and Mexico will continue to produce trucks during this period. The company also plans to actively manage inventory throughout the year. According to Cox Automotive, GM dealers have more than 100 days' worth of stock of Chevy Silverado pickup trucks, which reflects more cars on ground and a seasonally slower rate of sales. Inventory levels are over 100 days' supply for rival Stellantis's, Ram, half-ton, and heavy-duty pickups. According to Cox data, Ford Motor Co. also has 92 days' worth of F-150s in stock. This stoppage actually conforms to earlier claims made by GM Chief Technical Officer Paul Jacobson, who said the company intends to maintain an inventory of 50 to 60 days throughout 2023. That is a reduction of about 30 days' worth of inventory from pre-pandemic levels, though Jacobson claimed that present levels of demand do not require pre-pandemic production levels. In contrast, Stellantis reiterated that it had no scheduled downtime at any of its North American facilities, but would continually review its inventory levels and adjust production as necessary. Ford also shut down its EV production for a while, but for a different reason. Ford has been struggling with quality control this past year, as CEO Jim Farley has admitted. Additionally, its F-150 Lightning pickup is going through its own growing difficulties. Ford confirmed that a fire that started in a holding area close to the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center in Dearborn, Michigan, originated from a pre-delivery Lightning model and spread to another Lightning truck before being put out. Ford has refused to provide information about how or why the fire started, despite the fact that it has not received any fire-related customer complaints and that the primary issue has been located. After this, Ford announced the suspension of production of its F-150 Lightning pickup trucks. The stop build order was issued by Motor Authority after the Blue Oval discovered a potential battery issue with the electric truck. According to Ford spokesperson Emma Berg, who verified this to Motor Authority, a stop build and an in-transit stop ship order has been issued for the F-150 Lightning due to a possible battery problem. Berg stated that the potential problem was discovered as part of Ford's pre-delivery quality inspections. Currently, the automaker is unaware of any incidents or problems associated with this potential issue with customer-owned trucks in the field. She said, We are suspending production at the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center through at least the end of next week. We believe we have identified the root cause of this issue. 
By the end of next week, we expect to conclude our investigation and apply what we learned to the truck's battery production process. This could take a few weeks. We will continue holding already produced vehicles while we work through engineering and process updates. While Ford hopes to rectify this fire issue and resume production, many people have used this incident to prove their claim that EVs always have fire problems. The popularity of electric vehicles among auto buyers has been accompanied by a number of worries. The first of these fears was range anxiety, or the fear of being stuck in the middle of nowhere with a dead battery and nowhere to plug it in. Better and larger batteries have mainly consigned range anxiety to history, only to be replaced by charge anxiety. Will the plug-in point you need be working when you get to it? The one EV myth that continues to persist is that they are far more likely to catch fire than traditional combustion-engined vehicles. Social media is frequently flooded with photographs of electric cars catching fire, typically featuring a burning or flaming Tesla somewhere in an American city with the caption, look how dangerous electric vehicles are. But the truth is that research into real cases has revealed that EVs are much less likely to catch fire than their petrol or diesel counterparts, debunking the urban myth that they are. Just because there aren't as many images of gasoline-powered vehicles catching fire on social media doesn't mean that it didn't happen. However, it's not all good news. When an EV does catch fire, it makes it much more difficult for the fire department to put out the fires. People who are vehemently opposed to electric vehicles and the phase-out of gasoline and diesel vehicles are the ones who make the majority of the commotion surrounding electric car fires. Their worries are, at best, the result of a general lack of knowledge about electrically powered machines. After the release of many of these types of videos, Tesla released data in the US that claimed an EV was 10 times less likely to catch fire than the average rate of fires in petrol cars for every 205 million miles driven. And while figures from an EV manufacturer might be regarded with some suspicion, although statistics from EV manufacturers might be viewed with some skepticism, a US insurer studied data from the National Transportation Safety Board and found that battery-powered EVs only experience 25 fires per 100,000 sold compared to 1,530 for gasoline or diesel vehicles and, most notably, 3,475 for hybrids. However, that claim has also been disproved due to flawed methodology. In the UK, Air Quality News conducted a thorough investigation into the risk of EV fires and found that in 2019, the London Fire Brigade responded to 54 EV fires compared to 1,898 in gasoline and diesel vehicles. In a more recent study, CE Safety, a health and safety expert, found that there had been 735 callouts for EV fires in the UK over the previous five years. However, this included all EV types, including scooters and bikes, with cars making up just 44% of the total. This means that there are only about 323 EVs on UK roads for every 33 million cars. Additionally, Thatcham Research Chief Technical Officer Richard Billyield stated that although the data pool is presently small, Electric vehicles usually have a lower fire risk than fossil fuel vehicles in an interview with Forbes sometime last year. So, what do you think about electric vehicles? Also, what do you think about GM's move to shut down pickup production? Let us know down in the comments section. If you've watched it until now, thank you very much. Please consider subscribing to Velocity for more videos about EVs, Tesla, Ford, and the latest car news.